Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us here today, live on a very interesting topic, the hidden disease of modern people, hemorrhoids by Dato Dr. Ho. Dato Dr. Ho is a consultant general and vascular surgeon at Columbia Asia Hospital, Pataling Jaya. He was trained under the world-renowned vascular surgeons from the Royal Free and University College Hospital, London. He has worked in the United Kingdom for over 15 years. He was then being recruited from London back to Malaysia under the Malaysian Talent Corp Experts Program to set up and provide a vascular service of international standard at a private hospital. So his practice in vascular surgery ranges from treatment of spider veins, varicose veins, diabetic foot ulcers to major surgeries for aortic aneurysm, his practice in general surgery includes the treatment of gallstones, appendicitis, hernias, breast lumps, thyroid diseases, laser hemorrhoid surgery, laparoscopic surgery, endoscopies, and so on. So before we start, I would like to remind everyone that there will be a Q&A session toward the end. So please feel free to leave your questions at the comment box below and our speaker will answer it during the Q&A session. So this is a very good opportunity for you to ask our specialists any questions that you have in mind, which is related to our topic today, hemorrhoids. So without further ado, I would like to pass the mic over to Dr. Ho. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, on this afternoon. Uh, the topic is hidden disease of modern people, hemorrhoids. Um, it's a very common disease. Uh, I see many patients with this problem. Uh, unfortunately, most of them, they come very late because uh, they think it uh, won't cause any problems. They think it's uh, normal and also that um, they're quite shy to, 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 to go and see a doctor because of this very private area. So let's hope today we can get uh, more detailed information and uh, hopefully uh, we can start now. Okay, that is uh, me, a general and vascular surgeon. So hemorrhoids or pals as we know it in English, in Bahasa is called Wasi and in Chinese is Zi Chang, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, okay, so when we see this, can you see this diagram on the right hand side here? So this is basically our digestive system. So we start from the top here, that's the stomach. And then when the food is digested, it goes into these loops of small intestine, which is as long as a few meters. And then it joins into the large intestine on this side, on the right side. And the, uh, it, by then it becomes the stools and it goes through to the left side. And then it comes down all the way to this uh, anal canal. So this is the part that we will be mainly talking about today. Okay, so this is, here we go. Just gonna show you a bit of introduction about this uh, pulse problems. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed the video. So it says here, don't worry and don't be shy because we have all sorts of new treatment methods available nowadays. Okay, what are hemorrhoids or what are PALS basically? So this is a diagram 
to show that this is part is the anal canal, which we saw just now and we've enlarged it. So in the middle here, this is where our feces or our stools come out. So on both sides are the buttocks. And you can see here, these are the muscles over here and over here. So these are the, we call the sphincters. So a very commonly asked questions by the patients when they see me is that they worry because of these sphincters uh, getting damaged during an operation. So that is why when I ask them, why do you come so late? They say, oh, my friends or my relative or so and so say, oh, very dangerous if I go for operation, this will be cut and then I cannot control my bowels. So that means, you know, you cannot control when you go for uh, to the toilet or your fritters, you cannot control it. So that's why they're worried, okay? So basically in here we have this purple color thing. That is the venous plexus or basically veins, structure veins that contains blood. And when this become problematic or symptomatic, like for example, it becomes enlarged and swollen. So this is what we know as hemorrhoids. So you can see that coming out from inside. Okay, how many types of hemorrhoids? Well, there are two types. One is the internal hemorrhoids. That means it's the inside. So when you look at here, the inner canal, there's a imaginary line here called the dentate line. So uh, somewhere above up here, we call the internal hemorrhoids or the inside. And the second one is the external hemorrhoids, which is on the outside. So basically, it comes out and you can see it's protruding uh, outside the anus here. So anyway, uh, it's just two different types, but they are essentially the same problems and doesn't really matter so much. Whether you have internal or external, uh, if they cause problems, then it needs to be treated. So who are the people who are at risk of getting these hemorrhoids problems? Hereditary. So that means in the family, your siblings, brothers, sisters, or parents have it, you also will have a high risk of getting it. Pregnancy. So a lot of the times, uh, ladies who are pregnant, they may not notice that they have hemorrhoids initially, but when they are pregnant, the hemorrhoids will present themselves and may cause problems during the pregnancy. So this is usually related to the, uh, the fetus or the baby inside that's pressing on the veins and causing the uh, veins to have high pressure and becomes swollen. Weightlifting. So when we do leg weightlifting, we strain, like, you know, strain really hard. So that causes, again, the pressure inside the uh, abdomen or the, the belly, and it causes the, the, the pressure in the veins to increase and cause distension of the veins again, and that will predispose to hemorrhoids. Constipation, the same problem, same way of uh, developing a uh, uh, similar to weightlifting, uh, again straining during uh, uh, when you're opening the bowels, so that's not good. Bad toilet habits, such as reading newspaper, or nowadays you have mobile phones, uh, you sit for a long time in the toilet bowl, on the toilet bowl, uh, and the whole buttock is unsupported and the whole thing drops down, so that again predisposed to getting a hemorrhoids. Sedentary lifestyle, inactive or little to no exercise, that again also will uh, increase the risk of getting the hemorrhoids. Food intakes, spicy foods, for example. Uh, some people may be affected by spicy foods, some people may not. Again, alcohol also uh, is a risk factor for getting hemorrhoids. And certain occupations, for example, office works, you sit for long hours, Drivers, again, sitting for long hours, standing for long hours. And these are the 
possible risk that someone may have to get hemorrhoids. Now, you may not even have any of these risk factors in cans to get hemorrhoids. So we have certain grading for hemorrhoids, uh, depending on its size. So the first degree is that it's just inside here. So you can see again the anal canal here. These are the two buttocks. So it's inside here. That's a hemorrhoid. So that's called first degree. So when you get a second degree, that means it's become bigger and then it comes out during usually the bowel movements and then it goes back in on its own. So that is called the second degree. So when it gets even bigger, you get the third and the fourth degree. So that means it comes out and then it doesn't go back in. However, for the third degree, you need to push it back in manually using your hands, you push it back in, it goes back in. No matter how you push it, it will not go back in. So that's how we grade the hemorrhoids from one, two, three, and to four. So depending on the size and the severity. So a lot of times patients will come late, third degree and fourth degree. The later you present, the more difficult to treat it, okay? Because the size is bigger. So how do we know we have hemorrhoids? How does somebody know they have hemorrhoids? So what are the symptoms to look out for? Bright red blood after you poo. So that means when you go to the toilet, you open the bowels, there will be blood, which is bright red. Bright red means like those fresh blood that you cut yourself, that's the color of the blood. And usually it's not mixed with the stool. So your stool will look normal, it'll come out and then Blood, may, you may find it dripping after the end of it, or when you wipe on the tissue paper, you get staining of the, or sometimes it's just on the surface of your the stools. Okay, that's, that's how it usually presents. Itchy anus. So someone may have a itchiness, and this can also be caused by hemorrhoids. Sometimes, uh, there's a feeling that once after you open the bowels and you still feel like it's not uh, completely empty and you feel like there's something is still there and you still have the urge to go to a toilet again. Slimy mucus in your underwear or toilet paper after wiping the bottom. So these hemorrhoids sometimes produce slimy mucus. Uh, it can also become uh, present as a lump, as we've seen, and when it grows bigger, it will come out from the inside of the anal canal. And pain around the anus. So these are some of the common symptoms. So what usually we will be concerned of is when there's bleeding of mucus. Uh, so we will be uh, concerned that it may be something more than hemorrhoids. So what does it look like? So you can see it like a skin tag in the anus part, okay? So that can present as that. Sometimes you can see like a, a lump here, which is a purplish in color. So that's the blood vessel, as you see. So it's coming up from the inside. Or you can have a big lump like that. And this is uh, quite serious. Uh, it's, it's very swollen. Usually in this condition, it's very painful. So try not to wait until this is the problem. When should somebody see a doctor when they have hemorrhoids? When the hemorrhoids are right? And these are the symptoms that we have mentioned just now. So bleeding, itchiness, feeling like incomplete emptying of the bowels, mucus, lump in the anus or pain in the anus. There are certain conditions when you need to see a doctor urgently with these uh, hemorrhoid problems. When you're bleeding non-stop, so that means the bleeding is a lot. For example, the toilet water turns red or you see clots of blood clots, blood clots. So that 
is a, a clue that there's a significant amount of bleeding. Or if that's severe pain. So severe pain means they have pain all the time, which will affect their walking, sitting, they can't even sleep. So that's severe pain. And you have hemorrhoids and the temperature is very high or you feel hot or shivery and generally unwell. So this will indicate that that is an infection. Hemorrhoids can get infected and then you can have a few as a result of it. When you have pus leaking from a hemorrhoid, so this is a very serious condition because that indicates there's pus and the hemorrhoids are actually connected to the circulation that goes to the liver. So you can get abscesses in the liver as a result of this if left untreated. So again, when do you see a doctor urgently? These are all the problems that you must take note of. Okay. So when you see a doctor, what do the doctors do? Okay, first of all, we need to examine. So which means you know we have a look and then we examine the inside of your renal you know, canal uh, using a finger, uh, called a digital rectal examination. Uh, this is to check for any uh, lumps that shouldn't be there. And following that, we use a, a small little scope here called a proctoscopy. So uh, it's a very short scope, so it's just this long, and we can see the hemorrhoids through the opening here. Following these two, uh, a flexible simodoscopy or colonoscopy may be suggested, uh, especially in the uh, older age group, more than 50 or 55 years of age, and they have these problems with uh, bleeding because uh, we need to have a look throughout the whole of the large intestine using the camera. Uh, the causes of bleeding could be coming from inside as well, and there could be any growth inside that may cause the bleeding. So we must check, make sure there isn't anything left out or missed. So this is what we call a colonoscopy. So after knowing what the symptoms are and how the doctors uh, do the test, so it's time to uh, get some treatment. And first of all, we advise treatment by lifestyle changes. So how do we change the lifestyle? We train the patient's toilet habit. That means you must get a regular toilet habit. Make it an effort that every day you go to the toilet on a fixed time, regular, daily, on a routine basis. High fiber diet. So high fiber diet is recommended in the West. It's recommended five portions of fibers a day. That's a lot. The fibers will help to soften the stools and help to avoid constipation. Drink and your water. So the fiber itself is not enough because the fiber needs water to act. As we drink the water, the fibers will absorb the water and then it expands. And then that's how it functions. So it's very important to take these two together, and not only one of each. Exercise. So exercise is good. It helps to increase the body's uh, and the system's uh, Activity, so it will help to stimulate the, the bowels to move. And of course, uh, proper inner hygiene, so it's very important to avoid any infection. And with the lifestyle changes, there are certain medications that can help the symptoms. So, painkillers, so if there's pain, Painkiller can be uh, taken. Uh, it can be given in two types, two ways, uh, topical and systemic. What it essentially means is topical means there will be creams or certain uh, batteries that we can insert uh, into the anal canal. And systemic means you have uh, tablets to take. A short course of topical steroid cream. So when the hemorrhoids gets swollen and painful, there's also uh, inflammation. 
So the steroid cream will help to reduce the inflammation and that will help to reduce the swelling and pain as well. There are other medications that are more specific to hemorrhoid problems or vein problems. Uh, they're called phlebotonics, such as MPFF or diosmin. We will talk about it a bit more on the next slide. And stool softeners. So we we'll talk about fibers. So there are many types of fibers in the market that if you don't have time to consume your daily fiber uh, consumption, uh, you can take those stool softeners, you just mix it with water and then you drink it. So it's very simple. So MPFF is also uh, known as micronized purified flavonoid fraction. It contains these active ingredients, the diosmin and hesperidin, uh, plant-based. They are both plant-based. Uh, it's actually uh, obtained from the uh, citrus fruits uh, skin, so like oranges. So the way it acts is by reducing the inflammation and improves the function of the brain. And it's available over the counter in pharmacies. So there are many types available. Uh, importantly, most importantly, you get a good one. Yeah? Maybe a bit more expensive, but it's worth uh, to ask for a, a good MPFF. Following the medications, uh, if things still do not uh, improve, then depending on the size of the hemorrhoids, we have minor procedures that's available, such as rubber band ligation. So a band, a rubber band is actually a rubber band, is placed around the pulse to make them drop off. So it's basically to strangulate the whole pulse and then it will die off and fall off. So that's how we do it. So it's an applicator of, a, this is the rubber band, the black color. And this is the pulse here. So on a close-up picture here, you put all this whole thing over the, the pulse or the hemorrhoids. And then we release the rubber band and it stays here. So there you go, the next picture you see, it strangulates strangulates the whole pile so that at the end of the day, uh, this will drop off. So that is rubber band. It's very easy to use. It's done as a daycare. Patients come in and go home at the same time, and on the same day. Sclerotherapy. A sclerosin is injected into the pulse to make them shrink. Uh, however, it's not commonly available in Malaysia. Uh, how we do it is for the information, we inject the sclerosin directly into the pulse and then it will shrink and disappear. Infrared coagulation. So we use an infrared light to cut off the blood supply to the pulse and then it will shrink. So as you can see, this is the pulse here and the, usually the blood will come in like that. So we use this uh, coagulator here to stop the blood supply so it doesn't Get any blood anymore, so it will shrink. So these are the minor procedures that's available, especially when the pulse are quite small, so you can use this. When the pulse are more serious, you get bigger, then you need surgery. So the classical way or the old ways of doing it, the conventional way is the hemorrhoidectomy, which means open surgery. So the pulse are cut. So once the pulse is removed, you will have open wounds like that. Now these wounds will take quite a long time, maybe up to two or three weeks to heal. And the old ways are patients advised to go for the seat bath. So they, are, they have to sit in a pail of salt water uh, three times, four times a day to clean it. So it's very inconvenient. And also, uh, not to mention, it's quite painful, uh, especially the first few days of the uh, surgery, as this uh, contain a lot of uh, the big uh, extensive wounds. So uh, the other options available is stable hemorrhoidopexy. So basically it means uh, we push the pulse up inside and then put the metal clips all around it. So it's like the staples you use for stapling your papers. And this is the staples that to staple your pulse. 
and you can see this is quite a big instrument here and this is during the operation imagine this goes inside the anus um, not very nice is it okay uh, hemorrhoidal artery ligation we stitch the uh, blood supply uh, this time is the artery that is stitched so unfortunately uh, Sometimes uh, the arteries can be missed when it's been stitched, so it may not work uh, uh, very well. Uh, higher rate of occurrence uh, in terms of uh, the pulse may not disappear or may not uh, get treated properly. And then we come to a later type of uh, laser. So this is the tip of the laser fiber. So as you can see, it's only 1.8 mm in diameter, so it's very small. Uh, it's basically as thick as the tip of the ballpoint pen and at the tip here it emits the energy and it's connected to this uh, machine that produces the laser power and it's, uh, it's only uh, as big as the astro uh, box that you have at home so what uh, the advantage of this is how does it work basically it, it shrinks the uh, hemorrhoid tissue. So when, when the hemorrhoid is there, the laser goes into the hemorrhoids and it shrinks it when the laser is activated. Now it preserves the, the, the inside the wall because there's no cuts. So the whole thing is, remains as natural as it is. And then it also restores the natural anatomical structure. So when the hemorrhoid is shrunk and then the structures, the normal anatomy is restored. So that's the uh, principles of laser hemorrhoid procedure. So what's the advantages of it? The procedure takes a very short time. Basically, it takes about 15 minutes or, or on average. It's significantly less pain. So uh, most of the times, uh, patients are sitting and walking almost immediately after the procedure. There's no cutting and therefore there is no open wound. So, don't need to worry about getting the wounds clean every day, about three times a day, sitting in the sit bath, which is very inconvenient. Uh, with no wound, there is of course less uh, risk of infection. And it doesn't affect the continence. What this means is there is no cutting. So there is no uh, risk that the, the muscles that control the, the continence, or we call the sphincters, to be affected and therefore not there's no worry about losing the uh, control of the the, the passing your feces because this is the biggest concern of most patients and there's negligible risk of narrowing of anal canal so for the open surgery because when we cut all around the wound and when the wound heals it can shrink the opening of the anal canal and again because there's no cuts so Literally, there isn't any much risk at all of that happening. And of course, faster recovery. So to share with you uh, a bit on the laser treatment. That's the hemorrhoids here. It's at large. So this is a very small a scope that's put in and that's the laser tube here. So the laser is put inside these hemorrhoids. And then when the laser is activated, you can see that the hemorrhoid shrinks. cut the muscle, the wall is intact, painless, it's a gentle alternative, no cutting, no wounds, less infection, increase the hemorrhoids from inside out, can be done as a daycare for faster recovery. Continence is not impaired and nearly no risk of narrowing of the inner canal restores the normal anatomical structure. 
and we don't leave any foreign body inside, we don't leave any clips inside as compared to other methods. So you can see that's the picture of the laser fiber. It's so small, it's very thin. And then the laser light you can see here. So it's not the laser light, it's just a light to indicate where the tip of it is. So it's inside the hemorrhoids. So you can actually see the laser beam. It's very safe. Uh, all, most of the times, all the time, you can see where it is and what we, we are lasering at. So this is one, this is a great uh, severe hemorrhoids. So immediately after the procedure, you can see that it's become smaller. So it's very impressive. So what can someone do to prevent hemorrhoids from getting worse? Avoid constipation. So make sure you go to the toilet, open the bowels every day at a fixed time. Do not, when you have the urge to go, do not wait. Go to the toilet straight away. Weight loss is, uh, will be very helpful. Avoid prolonged sitting on the toilet. So don't take your mobile phone into the toilet. Just go in, do the business and get out. Avoid prolonged sitting at work. It's a bit difficult, but you know, if you do have to sit, so try and get up, exercise a bit every uh, 20 minutes or so. Uh, improve in a regular hygiene. So in conclusions, uh, hemorrhoids are a very common disease. It is important to know when to seek treatment, especially when to seek treatment urgently. There are many types of treatment available and laser being one of them, it has many benefits. Uh, with that, uh, I conclude my presentation this afternoon. Uh, the next session is the Q&A sessions. Now, there have been some questions already sent in, so I will uh, go through these questions first share the questions. So there's one in Chinese, how do I avoid surgery for hemorrhoids treatment? So uh, as we've discussed, so have a good lifestyle as we discussed earlier. Um, so make sure it doesn't get worse. And if it's symptomatic, uh, come early so that you can have minor procedures done. And avoiding the open surgery, and it does get even worse. And choose a method of treatment that is minimally invasive, uh, for example, like a laser. So here we go. The next question. Dr. Ho, I have come across a Facebook page regarding minimally invasive laser hemorrhoid. Do you offer this? Uh, yes, uh, it's available in this hospital. Is it common in Malaysia? Um, I would say it is not that common in Malaysia yet uh, because not every surgeon or every hospital they uh, offer this service. What is the difference between laser and other treatment methods? So again, uh, we have gone through all the benefits of uh, laser treatment, which is uh, no cuts, no open wounds, uh, less pain, because we don't cut any uh, open wounds, so there is no lower risk of infection, uh, no risk of damage to the sphincter, so you, you cannot make sure that you have control, no worry about losing control of your uh, sphincters and your passing motion, and faster recovery. Next question. Is it true that spending a long time sitting will lead to hemorrhage? Yes. Uh, that would be one of the risk factors, sitting a long time. Why do you say so? Uh, because if you sit a long time in the toilet bowl, the whole thing tends to drop down, right? Because the toilet bowl is, em is uh, as a empty in the middle, right? So your whole buttock is sinking downward, so it falls out. So that's the risk factor for getting hemorrhoids. So good afternoon, Dr. Ho. Recently, I have observed blood spots on toilet paper and always feel like something still sticking up. Which treatment option do you recommend? So um, here, uh, bleeding and something sticking up. 
So these are the two uh, symptoms. Um, it would be advisable to get it checked because hemorrhoid is a very common condition that can cause these two. Uh, it was also important to make it check that there is nothing sinister, no other sinister cause of this bleeding. So uh, if it's checked and then there is no uh, sinister cause and it's only hemorrhoids, so uh, I would go for the minimally invasive treatment method, so therefore the faster recovery. So the whole I have just delivered baby three months ago. Uh, visited a clinic doctor last week and the doctor advised me to remove the hemorrhoid. Do you recommend to receive treatment now? So it depends on how symptomatic the hemorrhoid is. If it is symptomatic enough to cause you, uh, affect you on the daily activities, yes, uh, probably good idea to get it treated. And again, of course, uh, you have options of minimally invasive procedures to surgery, open surgery. And of course, everybody wants a quicker recovery. So therefore, uh, minimally invasive, like laser, for example, would be a good idea. Dr. Ho, my mom is around 50 years old. When she goes to the toilet, she complains of pain and sometimes fatigue. I need to lie down on the sofa for some time. What and off she has blood stain on underwear. Could it be due to constipation? She rarely eats vegetables and fruits. So the problem here is pain, fatigue, and bleeding. So if there is too much bleeding, it can cause someone to be fatigued or tired. Right, this condition called uh, anemia is lack of uh, blood in the body. And then with that, they tend to feel dizzy. So that's why you have to lie down. Um, it's more very important to get it checked. I would recommend, to, uh, if she's 50 years old, I would recommend to do a colonoscopy to check where's the source of the bleeding. Um, constipation due to lack of uh, Fibers such as vegetables and fruits is a very common and very likely possibility and it's always good to eat as recommended five portions of fibers a day but her symptom is so serious that she must get it checked for any other sinister cause or such as growth in the large intestine. So Dr. Ho, I have bleeding stool now and then. Is it due to hemorrhoids? Again, uh, possible hemorrhoids is a very common condition and a lot of patients will have bleeding. Again, it depends on age group, whether you're high risk of having other problems. And if it is then, you must get it checked for other problems as well. And if it's been checked, it's only the hemorrhoids, then yes, you can have it treated. So my wife is eight months pregnant, but uh, was recently diagnosed with hemorrhoids. Is it safe for her to remove hemorrhoids now? Um, it depends on how uh, symptomatic the hemorrhoid is. So generally speaking, um, if it can be treated conservatively uh, until she delivers, that might be a good option. But if she has those serious symptoms like what you've talked about, you know, pus leaking out or fever from the hemorrhoids, uh, indicates a serious infection, then it has to be treated now. So, uh, and this is the last question, Dr. Ho, which MPFF do you recommend? Uh, so there are a lot of MPFF uh, in the market. Uh, it can be available in the pharmacy, uh, but not all are the same. Uh, I would recommend to go for a good one, which sometimes can cost a bit more expensive, but it's definitely uh, worth to take it uh, as it's been proven that uh, there's a lot of research done to it and these like, more expensive ones, uh, they work more effectively. Okay, uh, I think that's the end of the questions that's been sent in. So uh, we shall go to the uh, Facebook and see where are the public questions. Where's the first question? Okay, uh, Okay. hi Dr. Ho, I've spot bleeding sometimes and feel pain too during toilet time. I'm concerned about pain. Does laser treatment uh, painful? So 
uh, laser treatment itself is not uh, painful. It's uh, minimally painful, uh, but you know, uh, as in any procedures, uh, you need to take care of yourself, look after yourself after the procedure. Okay, uh, next question from Emmeline Kong. Good afternoon. Uh, will you recommend pregnant lady first and second trimester to take MPF diosmine? Um, MPF diosmine uh, has been shown uh, to be uh, relatively safe in pregnancy, but it's always a good idea to check with your uh, obstetrician uh, before taking any medications. Uh, and again, there are different kinds of PFF, different brands available. So again, it's hard to say uh, which specific brands uh, that is safe uh, during pregnancy. But generally speaking, yes, it is safe. And speak to your obstetrician first. Uh, next question. If a person has itchy anus, does it mean he has high probability of having hemorrhoids? Uh, uh, as we have talked about earlier on, Itchy anus is one of the symptoms of hemorrhoids. Yes, you may have hemorrhoids, but itchy anus is also uh, can be caused by a lot of uh, other causes like infection, parasites, uh, other kind of infection. So uh, uh, yes, so can be hemorrhoids. It can also be something else. Okay. Next question. Good afternoon. I have staple surgery before, three years ago. Recently, can feel some lumps coming out. A bit of bleeding, but not so much of pain. Uh, does laser suitable after staple surgery? Uh, the short answer to it is yes, it is suitable. Uh, but of course, it needs to be assessed case by case basis. Okay, next question. Thanks for, okay, thanks for pressing the welcome. I uh, understand all the advantages of uh, hemorrhoid, laser hemorrhoids, but wondering is there any disadvantage of laser hemorrhoids method? Okay. Um, the disadvantage, if you compare to other procedures, every risk, I mean, every procedure has its risk, and the risk of laser is lower compared to the other procedures. Um, but one of the uh, uh, advantage or disadvantage, put it this way, is uh, because laser is a new technology and uh, the cost uh, is a little bit more than uh, open surgery, for example. So I would say yes, that's about the only issue about laser. Next question. Okay, uh, my mom is uh, 50 years old, three children before, when she goes to the toilet, she complains very painful and sometimes fatigue. So I think it's similar questions we have uh, answered just now. Uh, so shall we skip this and go to the next one? Okay, right. I think we have finished the questions now and uh, I will pass you back to Valerie to conclude the session. Thank you, Dr. Ho, for your very informative presentation. So if anyone has any other questions, please feel free to put it at the comment box below. So the bring home message for today is that if you have uh, hemorrhoids or you suspect you have the symptom of hemorrhoid, please don't feel shy to seek for treatment. If you could get treatment earlier, you probably wouldn't even need any surgery at all. Yeah, so um, let's check the question. So um, I guess Dr. Ho has answered all of the questions. So thanks Dr. Ho once again and to all of our Facebook viewers, thanks for being here. Yeah. So if you have any questions or inquiries, please feel free to drop us a message at our social media page. And thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye.